Hey guys, Phil with the Minuteman Moment, and I have a huge announcement coming to you about GOA's ghost gun lawsuit. Our lawsuit against the ATF and their frame and receiver rule just moved to the next phase from our original filing over a month ago. And this is a huge step in moving our case forward and stopping this rule from going into effect on August 24th. That's right around the corner. The judge asked for a status conference and GOA submitted a brief defending against the ATF's response to our claim that this rule should not be allowed to go into effect. Not only is GOA fighting on the legal front, but we're fighting effectively and winning. To keep everyone in the loop, I'm gonna give you guys the summary of what we said in that response. ATF's proposed rule would have regulated most gun parts as frame or receivers. I'll say that again. ATF's proposed rule would have regulated most gun parts as frames or receivers. But the final rule now says it's just gonna regulate one frame or receiver while leaving the door open to future regulation of all the subparts. But ATF's final definition still makes no sense. It's not logically connected to the proposed rule and it should be struck down. When the ATF was asked why they didn't have a second round of comments, despite the fact that the final rule is completely different from the proposed rule, they said that a second round of comments would serve little purpose. The 60,000 GOA activist who opposed the proposed rule and didn't get to comment on the final rule would actually disagree with that. So for all of you home builders out there, according to the ATF's new test, an upper receiver might be serialized as a rifle, but a lower might be serialized as a pistol. Someone could combine an unserialized rifle lower and an unserialized pistol upper and have an unserialized SBR straight from the factory. That's great thinking on the ATF's part. Here's one way to look at it. In baseball, if you're hitting 300, it actually means you're pretty good. Well, the ATF is batting two for 20. The ATF cited 20 cases to justify the final rule, but only two of those cases are cited in the ATF's legal case against GOA. Apparently, the government's defense is that the final rule is only 90% wrong. But even more pathetic than that statistic is that the remaining 10% of the cases cited by the ATF relate to the National Firearms Act, not the Gun Control Act's definition of frame or receiver. So that means those cases they're citing are basically irrelevant. And the fact that ATF would use the NFA as an excuse to regulate non-NFA firearms is just another reason to get rid of the NFA. ATF also says that GOA and gun owners misunderstood the final rule. But gun owners and GOA should not accept the ATF's after-the-fact justifications of its broken, poorly written, and nonsensical final rule. So get this, ATF then claims solvent traps are unlawful and unregistered silencers, but also they can be lawfully made into suppressors. It's not gun owners that are confused about the meaning and application of this final rule. It's just also poorly written. I think our legal team put it best when they said, the final rules explanation of grandfathered frame or receiver is as clear as mud. And finally, the ATF is trying to make dealers serialize firearms but statute only requires importers and manufacturers to serialize firearms. Why does ATF sidestep this issue every time GOA raised it, both in formal comments and in our lawsuit? The ATF says it's crackdown on homemade firearms and expansion of an illegal gun registry is constitutional under the recently affirmed text and history of the Second Amendment. There's a free polymer 80 build by shoot kit in it for anyone who can find a ghost gun ban circa 1791. I've never been one to really count on the gun grabbers, never having any idea of how guns work and use that in our favor, but we're actually a little lucky, at least in this case, that they really are this stupid. But that doesn't mean we have an easy fight. Thankfully, there's GOA and we're leading on the front lines in this battle to defend the Second Amendment, but it's not over. Never forget, the reason they want all guns and all suppressors to have a serial number is because they want a system in place to help them confiscate it. So please continue to support our work and join us in this fight by clicking the link below. We want you to stay informed on how we're using all of our resources to fight back against the ATF and the administrative state and Congress at times. So please subscribe and share the video. If you comment below with what you liked about this video, it helps spread the message. Until next time, we'll see you soon.